Travel, tourism, and hospitality um, visitors in Whatcom County spend $705 million a year. So it's devastating. Different parts of this industry are gonna return or recover at different times. People are thinking, they're dreaming, they're planning for when it's safe to travel. All right, we're here today with Annette and Sandy from Bellingham Whatcom County Tourism. And we're going to talk a little bit about the impacts that the coronavirus has had on our community and tourism. That's a big part of our economy. So welcome, Annette and Sandy. Thank you. Hey, Josh. Hey. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about tourism. How have we been impacted here in the last couple of weeks and just looking forward into the next couple of months? Summer is obviously a big a big time for us as a community. What are you guys seeing? Well, what we're seeing, Josh, is, um, of course, because of the stay home, stay safe order, people are sheltering in place. Prior to that, even, uh, there was a downturn in uh, travel bookings. And this is to be expected um, as people are trying to stay um, away from the virus and exposure to it. The industry that's been hardest hit in Whatcom County in the tourism sector is uh, the hotel industry. And then what goes along with that, of course, is people who stay in hotels, uh, shop in retail shops, they eat in restaurants. And so it's really impacted uh, those industries the very most. Uh, it's really a problem for our hotels when nobody's staying in their rooms. When we look at that, we also see the meetings market. So when we're thinking of hotels, we think of business travelers, uh, leisure travelers, but we also have hotels that depend on big groups and meetings. So that would be the Four Points, Bellwether, Chrysalis, uh, Semiamu, Silver Reef, Holiday Inn and Suites at the airport. And those um, organizations and hotel properties have lost um, many, many meetings. In fact, just through July, we see at least $2.3 million in lost business. And this is just in their hotels. This doesn't um, explain the losses that go along with the retail establishments and the restaurants and the things that people do in those cities while they're attending a meeting. So it's devastating. Yeah, I know we definitely feel that because we we work in a lot of event spaces and we do videos for events and everything is canceled and it's just hard, so hard to see people in that situation. We're all affected by it. I know a lot of nonprofits who depend on those fundraising events and hosting those at hotels, all of those are canceled. And so that whole stream of funding is, is gone for them as well. So yeah, really, really challenging. If you want to talk about the economic impact of tourism period, the last time we uh, measured this, which was for 2018, travel, tourism, and hospitality um, visitors in Whatcom County spend $705 million a year just in um, Bellingham and Whatcom County. And that's like hotels, restaurants, retail establishments, um, those kinds of things that, um, you know, really, impact everyone. How long, I know it's so impossible to say what the future is going to look like, but do we have any idea of what the rebuilding is going to look like in our community and how people are going to try to recover from this? So one of the things we want to emphasize is that we're the destination marketing organization, destination management organization for Bellingham and Whatcom County, and it's a job we've had since 1978. So we have a long history with this community. And um, we are, uh, I'll let Annette tell you a little bit about what we're doing to support everybody while we're going through this crisis. But um, I will also tell you that we're gonna be here to help lead us, uh, lead this industry out of the crisis and into the future. The thing we, we don't know is when, and there are certain scenarios that we believe have to happen. And so we're gonna look at this from a scenario standpoint versus a time standpoint. And so what we know is that there are certain things that have to happen before we can start thinking about a recovery. And one of those is that there has to be a reduction in the rate of infections on a wide scale. And then secondly, we know that the shelter in place orders and restrictions have to be lifted on a wide scale. 
And then, then we have to see things open back up like hotels, restaurants, activities, like our parks and our trails and our venues. And then, you know, we have several crises going on at the same time. So not only are we having a health crisis, but we're having an economic crisis as well. So we've got people who might not have the money to spend on travel. And so different parts of this industry are going to return or recover at different times. And so um, people's willingness to travel, uh, how far will they go? We're pretty well positioned in Bellingham and Whatcom County because we know that the drive market will return first. And that's where people feel, we know that people feel safest actually in their cars right now. And so they will get in their car to drive someplace. And we're really in between two major, major markets, Vancouver, BC and Seattle. So we're really well positioned to benefit from early recovery. And then we know that emotional stability and confidence in the safety of things is gonna to have to happen as well. So instead of looking at a timeline, we're actually looking at scenarios that will tell us when it's time to start changing our messaging to potential visitors. Uh, we're trying to stay top of the mind. So um, through our social media channels and we've actually had more requests for visitor guides in the last two weeks than we've had in the two months prior to that. So people are, people are thinking, they're dreaming, they're planning for when it's safe to travel. Sandy and I have been working really closely on um, strategies moving forward. And um, as she said, it's, you know, everybody wants to know what day are we going to get back to normal, but we don't know a day. Um, we've been studying um, a lot of industry um, information on the national level. Um, we have a lot of access to American traveler sentiment surveys and um, information from the U.S. Travel Association and Destinations International. So we've really been using those tools as a guide as well as the information from our local and state um, government agencies and health departments. But really, as Sandy said, um, we don't know the timeline we're we're really looking at those indicators and um, trying to think about how what messages we might be able to put out as things roll forward. Um, when this first started, our team swung into action immediately. Our um, website is very robust with information. We have really worked on what is the appropriate messaging right now. Um, and our mission is to speak to visitors, people outside of a 50 mile radius and encourage them to visit. Obviously right now that is not possible, um, but we have all of these tools at our disposal. So we have changed our strategy into helping locals help each other. So um, it's very important that we as a community keep these small businesses alive so we've put our energy towards um, creating lists of restaurants that are offering takeout and curbside and delivery. That was one of the first things that we did. And that had a, a very high viewership on our website. Um, and we've continued to work on what is the messaging that people need right now. So as a community, where do you, where do you see us going from here throughout this? You know, when all this blows over, how do we... How is that going to change us as a community and change the way that people visit our community or will it? Um, we know that this industry is robust. Uh, if we can just make it through this and keep our small businesses alive so that people have something to visit when we get through this. But one thing we know about travelers is that they will do without a lot of things, but they will not do without their travel. Um, it'll you know, like we said, a little bit different. People will be coming to us mostly from the drive market. Fewer people, you know, initially will be coming from the UK or Germany. That will eventually return, but we'll get through this. And um, our job is really to make sure we're all um, holding hands and, and going this route together. Yeah, fantastic. So can we end on a maybe a positive note? What, what are some silver linings that you're seeing in this? Or what are some things that have really inspired both of you in our community as people are responding to coronavirus? Well, we've seen a huge silver lining in the arts community coming together in force to 
um, provide content on a daily basis uh, for the community. So obviously we can't go and see a show um, or participate in um, an art walk, um, et cetera. But the arts community really rallied together right away and created the Whatcom Arts Project, which is a campaign to put this awesome arts content out on a daily basis. They created a Facebook page, so Facebook um, Whatcom Arts Project, which is where the content is released every day. Um, there are educational um, pieces for elementary school and for high school and above. And then there are evening, either date night or family night pieces that are being put out as well. And we have been housing a, a calendar of all of that information on bellingham.org, just bellingham.org slash Whatcom Arts Project. It's amazing. There have been multiple, multiple Zoom meetings with 30 plus individuals, all representing different arts organizations in this community, all together, all working for the same goal very quickly, um, getting it all put together. And this energy and togetherness that has been created is something that everyone has desired, but we've all been so busy in our own worlds working on our own projects that it's often difficult to get everybody to have time to meet together. So um, this is really something that we see continuing that, you know, the, the entire group is is on board and, and wanting to see this continue into the future and, and continue to work this closely together. It's amazing what can get done when everybody is available at the same time to get some one thing done together. So that's really been a silver lining for us. I'm just impressed with what Annette has been able to bring together. We had this cultural heritage tourism strategic plan that we've been implementing for the last couple of years. And um, Annette was able to uh, pull this group together and uh, the uh, Whatcom Arts Project was born, as she said, <clears throat> is a perfect example of everybody coming together. Uh, for one cause. And so that's been really inspirational. And I would encourage people just to go to bellingham.org and search around in there. There's all kinds of really great uh, content in there and blog posts. And um, so bellingham.org is a, is a great place for people to go to, to see what we're up to. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for your time today and for participating in this, this series. Thanks for everything that you're doing with tourism. Well, thank you, Josh. All right, you can find all of the links in the description below to Bellingham Tourism and some of the other programs that are uh, mentioned in this interview. Feel free to check that out and like, subscribe our channel, and we'll see you next time.